In the last part, materials were introduced and we made our own so we can decorate the pickups and the player. Now for the final part of the series, we get to create and display the user interface. We need to display how many points the player has and, and also show a winning message once all the pickups got collected. In order to start working on the UI, we need to make a user interface widget. Right click in the content browser and at the bottom where it says user interface, there will be a few options. We need the widget blueprint and I'm, I already have one over here and it, I have it called blueprint underscore game UI. So let's open it up and check out the editor. This is going to be the last quick rundown of an editor in the series. I can't believe this is it. On the left side, there is palette panel, which contains all the UI elements you may need, like a button, an image, or a text box. And underneath it is the hierarchy, and it's like the world outliner, but for this UI. And let me just go ahead to drop in a text block in advance. And over here on the right side, you can see the details panel, which pretty much displays all the parameters and information related to that UI element, in this case, the text element. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to points label. And I'm going to move the anchor down to the bottom left corner of the screen of the box. Anchors are like points of reference for the UI element. If the game window resizes, then the UI elements will resize and stay in the same position relative to that anchor point. Also come to think of it, this is like another creative part of the series where you can put the text anywhere inside this box. If you want to follow along, that's alright too. So I'll talk about my thought process and some concepts while making the text. I'm going to set the position to be 0, 0. And now the text box is underneath the canvas, which is not good. It means that it's not going, it's not going to get displayed. This is where alignment plays a role here. By default, the center point of the text block is at the top left corner, zero, zero. But I want to flush the UI element to the corner of the canvas here. So I'm going to keep the X zero, but I'm going to make the Y one. This will set the center point to be at the bottom left corner of the text block. Positive Y direction is moving the center point downwards in the UI element. Next, I'm going to write out points. So in the content, I'm going to change this to points with the colon. Press enter to update it. And I'm going to check size to content to have the text box border to get rid of any of the white spaces. It really helps prevent any unwanted overlaps between two UI elements. Then in the appearance, there are options to change the color and the font size. I'm going to set the size to be like 72 and I'm just gonna leave it white. Then in the hierarchy panel, I'm just going to select the points, the text box, and I'm just going to do control W to duplicate it. And what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to eyeball. I'm going to eyeball this next to points and I'm going to make the numbers cleaner so it's easier to edit and see. I'm going to set this to zero. And I'm going to change this to zero as a placeholder points. When you start the game, it's good to start off with zero because the player didn't get any pickups yet. And I'll speed up making the win message. So this is for once the player gets all the pickups. So I'll make a new text, set the anchor to the middle, I'm going to say the alignment is at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so the center point is directly in the middle of the text block. I'm going to click on size to content, and I'm going to zero out the position, so now it's dead center. I'm going to change the text to something like, you win, and I'm going to set the size to be something huge, maybe like 128, that's big. And I'm going to set the color to something maybe yellowy. And that looks good. Right now, if we display this in the game, the you win message will show up and the points will stay like 
this, and it's always going to be zero, and doesn't increment when we get a pickup. We need to bind some functionalities to the UI elements. We need one for the point and the win message. For point, the zero, over where we wrote the text, there is a little button called bind. Click on it and create a new binding, and you will see the blueprint visual scripting part of this text block. I already went ahead and added in the functionalities to this, and it's pretty simple. You can pause here if you like. What I did was that I, cr I created a variable called point, and it's an integer. I get that and have it connect straight to return value. Automatically, it creates a two text node that converts the integer into text, which is what the return value needs. And that's it for the points part. So go back to the designer mode and select the win message. For this one, we can make the message completely transparent until the player got all the pickups. So click on the bind next to color and opacity option and create a new binding. For the win message function, it's also short, but a little bit harder. I created a variable called you win opacity, which is a float. Then with this, I sort of worked backwards, starting from the return node. It needs a slate color type, so make slate color node for that. Next, there is a node called make color, which, well, makes a color by combining four float variables that make up red, green, blue, and alpha. I hard coded the number and the RGB values for yellow, and for alpha, I just connected the uwin opacity to that. It's sort of a bad idea to hard code the numbers to make color. At this point in time though, I haven't figured out how to actually get the color from the text. So if you happen to know how to do that, please comment down below. I would appreciate your help on it. And that would be it for the win message. So what is significant about binding a function to these UI elements? If we change any of the variables, the point and the uwin opacity, then run the binded function. For example, with points, the game will update the point variable inside this UI blueprint. Then the function will notice that it changed and update it in the text. Finally, the UI is done. Now we need to get it displayed in the game. For this and other UI related functionalities, I put them in my game mode blueprint. So there, there are a lot in here. So I'll explain what is going on. Starting off with the variables, there are only two. The current UI and current points. Current points is an integer that keeps track of how many points the player has right now. And the current UI is a blueprint game UI object type of variable. And you can make the variable type to be a certain blueprint class by searching up the name of the blueprint right here. So blueprint blueprint game UI. Okay, so the first functionality is very important since it's the one responsible for making the UI appear in the game. So at the beginning of the game, we create an instance of that game UI blueprint that we just made and assign it to our current UI variable. Then the add to viewport node will take that current UI and display it in the game. And then finally, this is sort of optional, but I also have it to call a custom event reset game right underneath. In reset game, the current points is set to zero. And then with the help of the current UI variable, I can access the point and the uwin opacity. You can access those variables by making a new node off of the current UI and search for either get or set point and there will be a node listed in the results. Underneath is another custom event called update points. Its job is to add one to the current point and update it in the UI. In the end, it calls the last custom event end game. In it, it checks to see if current points is greater than eight. You can find this node by typing in greater than equal. Also, make sure to have current points to be at the top circle, because if you have it at the bottom and when the player gets the first pickup, 
Then it will display the win message because 8 is greater than 1. The reason for having 8 there is because that is how many pickups there are in my level. So if you have 10 pickups, you would put in 10 there. Then I plug it into a branch node as the condition. If, if it's true that we have 8 points, then we want to turn on the uwin opacity from the current UI to 1, which makes the message appear on the screen. So that's it for functionalities, though there is one more thing that needs to be done in the pickup blueprint. In the pickup blueprint, after we destroy the pickup, if the player touches it, I added in a cast to node and got my game mode from it. All the nodes, all the events that I just went over are in this game mode. So we can just call update points from right here. And that is all. So let's play the game. Let's play the game now. So now we can see the points and it increments by one as I get the pickups. And once I do get all the pickups, it displays the UN message. Awesome, and we won. Now that we know what UI is like in Unreal, let's go check out the differences with UIs in Unity quickly. Here in Unity, the UI doesn't have its own editor, nor do we have to tell the game that we would like to use this canvas. Automatically, it gets added into the game and it can be seen in the game view. In the scene view, however, it's like a skyscraper, so it's it's probably best for looking at the game view while editing the UI. When you create a UI element for, for the first time, Unity will create a canvas and an event system object for you. The canvas is a space where the UI elements live, and for the event system, that is there to make it possible for the player to interact with the elements. Without it, it wouldn't be possible for the game to notice that the player is clicking on a button or trying to write a name in the input field. So it's important to have that. We don't really need to worry about that when we are making UIs in Unreal. And of course, if you like to update the text, we would need to make a script that does that. And that is Rollerball in Unreal. That's the game. Congratulations on making this small beginner game in Unreal. Rollerball has helped me and many others to start off with our game development journey. Just think about what it was like before and after making this game. We started from the very beginning, setting up our project and making our arenas, to diving into blueprints and making it to rotate our pickup, and we gained more experience with them to make our player and seeing it also used for making our own materials. And we tweaked with the collisions to make the player run over the pickups to collect them and finally created our UI and display it on the screen. If you'd like to gain more experience in Unreal, play around in the project more or find tutorials on things that you would like to get better in. So I hope this helps you out like it did with me. Leave a like if it did, comment down below what you think about Unreal, and don't forget to subscribe to see more tutorials and I will see you back in the next level. Bye!